Ryan Mahler with EndlessMartialArtsDrills.com. We're going to be talking about timeout boxes and discipline with younger kids. So let's start out by saying this. Um, I like to teach my students to be first time listeners. Wouldn't we all love that as a parent to have your child listen the first time? Um, so what I mean by first time listeners is if I ask them to do something, if I say attention stance, or if I say everybody line up here, they know that they need to do it on the first time or they're going to be in trouble. So <coughs> we develop a first time listener. The first time I say something, they do it. So to do that, you have to be consistent. Okay. So this is my, my process and what I do. Um, if a child is, is outbursting or doing something that they're not supposed to be doing in the class, I immediately give them a warning. I let them know. I'll say, I'll say their name. Uh, a lot of times, if it's in a big classroom situation, um, and, and it's a, like an ADD child or someone who has trouble focusing, I'll say their name really loud. I'll say, Daughter! And everything will get quiet. And that will end most of the behavior in class, what's going on. And then I'll say, I need you to focus. Okay? I need you, and I'll correct whatever, whatever they're doing. Um, Don, we cannot be talking out of turn. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. And then move on. So, <clears throat> what I did was, I got his attention really quickly without um, going, Don, 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 Don. Look over here, Don. No, just, Don! And then there was a pause. Notice the pause. That's important. Because now, whatever's going on in class, especially if he's doing something dangerous, everyone around him is aware that something's up. Somebody's not following the rules. There's, there's something going on. And I'll say, Don, I need you to focus. You need to eyes on me or whatever it is that I'm correcting him for. I'll tell him what he's doing and I'll give him a warning. And I'll tell him. If you do, and sometimes I, I will tell him right away. If you do that again, you're going to sit out. And most of my, most of my uh, students know by the first warning, the next warning, the next time they're sitting down, time out. So let's say Don is doing the same thing a little later on. Uh, he's you know talking out of turn or, or whatever. Let's say Don is, is talking out of turn. He's just blurting things out. I'll say Don, we I warned you a minute ago about talking out of turn. We need to go sit in the timeout box. Come with me. Now I'll bring him to the timeout box area. Preferably just take some some tape and uh, make a square on your mat. Uh, just somewhere off to the side that's out of the way, that's away from all the fun, and uh, just have them sit in the box. Now, when you bring them to the timeout box, it's important with discipline that you don't be, you can't be angry. An example of what I mean is, Don, I just told you not to do that. Now, come here, sit in the timeout box. Now the child, Don is taking that personally. Don is thinking like, hey, Mr. Mom is mad at me, he's doing, you know, kids get yelled at every day, their parents, their teachers, their, their friends, whatever you know. The last, I don't want to be that influence. I don't want to want a child to think that I'm being mean to them. Um, when you when you say it with oh, not even a, like a, like a robotic tone, like just a matter of fact tone, like Don, I asked you not to do that. We have to sit in the timeout box now. It's a little different. It takes the emotion out of it, and the child is you know thinking, oh yeah, I, it, it, they're not focusing on me as the problem or the, the bad guy. It's their action that they did. Oh yeah, I did that. I shouldn't have did that. You know, in their head. So I'll bring down the timeout box. Whenever you put someone in a timeout box or you, you sit someone out, you I like to get on their level. Uh, you know, a four-year-old that's that's this tall, and I'm talking down to them. To the parents, that looks like you know, like that doesn't look good. To the child, they feel you know really small, and they might even listen to what I say. They might just be really scared. So what I'll do is I'll get on their level and I'll look them in the eyes. That's very important. So if Don is this tall, I get on Don's level and I'll say Don. So once I once I take him to the side, um, or I'll even have an assistant do this uh, while I continue to run the class. I'll say Don, um, what were you doing over there? Or I'll, I, when I put him in the timeout box, I'll let him know. Don, you were talking out of turn. I know you can't do that in class. Okay? And maybe explain why everybody can't talk out of turn. I'll give him a, a, a simple explanation. And I'll say, now I'm going to sit you in the timeout box for a little while. You're going to have to sit down. And when you're ready, when, I, when I'm ready to have you back in class, you're going to come back in class, okay? Yes, sir. So Don sits down. He may pout. He may throw a little tantrum. Not want to hear what you have to say. Um, I don't. I don't allow that. The first time a kid has a tantrum in my class, you know, like, I don't want to do that. You know, something like that. Um, you you can't put up with it because it comes. In, it becomes a behavior that they think they can do, and uh, you know that that's not going to be the case. And so what I'll do is, let's say Don had a tantrum. Don's like, he's not listening. I asked him. I said, you understand, Don? He's like. Say, Don, if you don't communicate with me, if you don't answer, we're going to the lobby right now and you're going to have to sit out the rest of the class and you're not going to be able to play games. I'll give some kind of thing. Um, and 
I said it in the beginning, you have to be consistent. If Don ignores me or Don continues that, take him by the hand, bring him to the lobby, bring him to the parents, explain to the parent. Don is not cooperating today. Don is going to sit in the lobby. Meanwhile, Don's dad's head is coming disconnected because he's so mad at his son that his son's not doing it. Don is, Don is in a lot of trouble. Uh, Don's parents are going to be disappointed. And let Don know, I'm very disappointed in you, Don. He may change his mind all of a sudden. Like, oh, God, my dad is going to be so mad. Or, or everybody, I'm not going to be able to play games. But, uh, yes, sir, I'll do it. A lot of times that fixes the problem. If it doesn't, I just leave him in the lobby. And uh, that may not be a child, but I want to teach him my program. If the child's not going to listen to me in a class of 30 kids going on, I don't want them in my program. And you should have the same attitude. Okay? Um, so, let's say Don fixes that. Yes, sir. He sits down. Okay, I'll go back to doing my work in the class and, you know, we're having a great time. I'll pick a time, you know, when, uh, depends on how severe it was or how many times he sat out in the penalty box before. But usually I'll leave him there one minute or, you know, at that age, at four years old, one minute's a long time. They forgot about why they're in the time box blocks and they're, you know, they're moving on after a minute. One to two minutes is fine. Then I'll come back. <coughs> if I have enough time, it's a small class, I'll send an assistant or you know, I'll do it myself. I'll get back on Don's level and I'll say, okay, Don, why are you in the timeout box? Because he might have forgot why he's in there. I want him to remember what he did. So he'll, and I'll ask him to restate it. Why are you in the timeout box? So he can say, um, I don't know. If he doesn't know, I'll make him sit there for another minute and think about it. But most of the time, he'll say, because I was, because I was talking out of turn, sir. I want him to own his, be responsible for his own actions. So he'll tell me why he's sitting up. And I'll say, you're right, Don. So what should you, here's the key words here. What should you do next time, Don? Or what are you going to do next time? Next time I'm going to raise my hand if I have to talk, or I'm not going to talk during the stretch, sir, or whatever it is that, that Don was doing. So right now what you got him to do is he sat for a few minutes and thought about what he did. He restated to you why. Because sometimes they may sit out and you just bring them back in. They have no idea why they were sitting out. I see that all the time. My beginner instructors do that. They'll get upset with the kid and he's cutting up and they'll, they'll tell him to sit on the side and then they'll do this thing. Dog, are you ready to come back in now? Of course Dog's ready to come back in. He didn't learn anything. He just sat on the side. He doesn't even know why. So make a free state uh, why they sat out and uh, what they should do next time. And then I'll say, all right, Dog, let's get back in the class. Boom, you're going to have a good day. I like to end with something positive after they've been in the, the discipline box because, you know, they kind of feel self-conscious, all the kids are looking at it. You know, I say, all right, we're going to have a good time now, right? Yes, sir. All right, let's get back in here. And then usually that fixes the problem. Sometimes kids will have to sit out the timeout box more than once in a class. I don't warn the kid again. So, like, if I give one warning and then I send them to the timeout box and they come back in and they do the same thing again, they go right back to the timeout box. If I have to put somebody in the timeout box even once, they don't get a sticker at the end of the class. At the end of every class, I get a sticker to every kid who did a good job. And if you made it to the timeout box, you may get a sticker at the end of class. It's a little more, it's not a long-term uh, punishment, but it's just like a short-term thing where they're going to be like, oh, man, I, I didn't get my sticker today, man. The next time I better, I better, I don't want to set the timeout box again. So that's one of the things that you can use in your, in your school. So timeout boxes are very effective. I suggest you uh, have one in your, in your school and then set it up and use it.